right. I'd like now, I would now like to call the August 22nd, 2022 Golf Course Advisory Board meeting to order. Uh, roll call. A uh, Rick. Here. <laughs> John Hay. Here. Paul Mayer. Yeah. Philip Schuckelbeer. Schuckelbeer. Here. <laughs> Al uh, Wolden. Here. And Council Member Tim Waters. I, he, he might be late because he indicated that he was going to be here. Okay, so he's not president. <laughs> okay, we need to be started on your own vote. Hi, call Councilman Waters. Hey, Councilman. Council member Tim Waters? All right. Um, can I get approval of the agenda? I, I have a change. Do you want to change that? That seems off. Well, oh, sorry. Go ahead. So I would like to change the order that after we do public invited to be heard that we do do business a first. That way, our visitors don't have to stay here all night. It's as much fun as we want to be with. Like, like, <laughs> so after public invited to be heard, if we could be jump down to seven a. Gotcha, I heard 5A. I was like, that's where we go. Never mind. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we have heard the agenda as modified. Second. I do have a couple of modifications. Well, first. Okay. So it states that Ryan Williams was. So we're, we're on the agenda. We're not right. at minutes yet. Oh, on. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Wrong. <laughs> okay. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> So, approval of tonight's agenda. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, on to approval of previous months' minutes. So, I have one, uh, two comments. It says that Ryan Williams was both present and absent. I'm not sure. He was good that night. <laughs> yeah, he was really fast. Yeah, he was not there. <laughs> he was not there. Sorry. Yeah, there yeah. Was. And then the other thing is, uh, again, in our revenue, we keep putting a decimal point. It's really 143%, not 1.43%, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through on both revenue and rounds. Otherwise, we only do up a couple of points, not where we're really at. First, you got a first and a second, then you can all of them. Okay. <laughs> can we get a vote for the approval of the modified previous month's minutes? Yes. Aye. 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 You should have a class for that. <laughs> <laughs> to 7A, New Business, Information on the Anticipated 2022 Election Ballot Questions. <coughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Becky Toil, Director of Strategic Integration. Uh, we're here to share some information about items that are on the ballot for November. Um, I don't know if you're the best place to talk probably. Uh, the first thing we'd like to share is a video about some Yeah. 
In 2013, Longmont experienced a 100 year flood that resulted in over $53 million in damage to Longmont's infrastructure. Area homes and businesses were damaged, and bridges were flooded or washed away. In response, the city of Longmont initiated the Resilient St. Rain Project, which not only focuses on repairing what was lost during the flood, but also aims to ensure that future floods are not as destructive to our community. Beginning in 2014, conceptual plans for improvements for the St. Brain Creek Channel and the necessary funding were established. Half of the required bond funding was approved by voters then, and this year, voter approval is needed for the second half. So far, these funds, combined with federal grant funds, have been used to expand channel capacity from Sandstone Ranch to Sunset Street. We also replaced greenways, creating space for people, water, and wildlife. Several bridges that span the St. Grain Creek within the city were replaced to allow increased flow levels to pass underneath. These improvements have helped to significantly reduce the extent of the floodplain, so fewer properties are at risk of flooding. As we approach the final phase of the project, the city is ready to seek voter approval for the second half of the funding. On the November ballot, Voters will be asked to approve the issuance of $20 million in storm drainage bonds to increase channel capacity from Sunset Street to Hover Street, protecting people, property, and infrastructure from future flooding risks. While the city continues to pursue grant funding for this next phase of improvements of the Resilient St. Brain Project, work cannot continue without additional funding in place. You can think of bond funding like taking out a mortgage on a house. Using bonds helps pay for needed improvements now while spreading out the cost of those improvements over time. That means that both current and future users share in the costs more equitably. These are all considerations to keep in mind when voting. Here are some reasons why a voter might be in favor of this ballot issue. And here are some reasons why a voter might be against this ballot issue. A yes vote would allow the city of Longmont to issue $20 million in storm drain bonds along with existing fund balances and adopted rate increases to complete resilient St. Frank improvements to Hover Street. A no vote would mean bonds would not be issued. Adopted rate increases would still take place. Those rate increases plus existing cash balances could be used for identified projects, but other funding sources would need to be found. The safety and resilience of our community in the face of future flood risks are essential. We ask you to spend some time researching the issues, ask questions if you have them, and most importantly, vote. vote. Learn more about the storm drain bond issue at longmontcolorado.gov slash ballot. Election day is Tuesday, November 8th. Um, 
enterprise revenue bonds can be issued um, without the, the public uh, under TABOR. So TABOR has, has requirements about um, electors um, approving you know, new taxes and, and debt issuances of those tax finance funding streams. Hey, that's that. a little better. <laughs> in this case, the storm drainage utility is, is an enterprise under TABOR. In other communities, you wouldn't see this kind of question, but there is a charter requirement in Longmont that says that voters approve all issuance of debt, um, which we think is great because <laughs> you know, we, we can share information with you and um, make sure that the community is aware of the efforts that are taking in the city. So, um, just to reiterate, not a tax, not a tax, not a, a, a tax finance um, bond. So, these are a few, um, a few photographs of, of some of the areas that were flooded in 2013. How many of you were here in 2013? Most. Okay, so you remember um, Twin Peaks. Um, so the video really went over what what the the project is. And essentially, it's it's in, uh, in taking Brazilian state green project improvements from Sunset Street and Over Street. Necessarily, again, unless we have specific questions. Um, and then again, this is the same information from the video that um, the, the, the outcome of the vote doesn't necessarily impact an uh, adopted rate of increases which are already in the municipal code. Um, but you know, does does that be available for uh, for the project? Okay. Again, slightly longer, same information. Um, from the video about some reasons why folks might be in support of this ballot question. And similarly, um, why folks might oppose it. So, there's that. Um, I'll let Sandy talk about the charter and then do questions on both, you think? Sure. <laughs> Great. Thanks. All right. We're good. Hello, I'm Sandy Cedar, Assistant City Manager with Shared Services. And I'm hoping that Becky Duck's in here and distracts me as much as I distracted her during her presentation. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm here to talk about the charter amendments that the City Council is interested in running in this ballot. Um, there are two ballot issues that the Council has approved for your consideration. The first one really is some cleanup and streamlining of the current charter. It includes things like what you see here. It includes the city to, to allow the city to use electronic signatures for documents, um, allowing employees who don't live in Longmont to participate on retirement boards. Right now, you have to be a registered elector of the city of Longmont to participate in our own retirement pension boards. Uh, allowing administrative approval for low or no cost agreements with other governmental entities. So these are things we call them IGAs and governmental agreements. <laughs> <laughs> um, where really those become administrative approvals when they're kind of low risk and no cost, low cost. A lot of the election rules are the state rules. So right now the election calendar for the state actually has different dates than our election calendar. Uh, so we've been deferring to the state, really it needs to be made up in the charter. Um, allowing city council members an option to end their term as they run for a different position. So the ones that you see, the first four, those are really a charter cleanup election issue. And the second one is a separate issue, which allows council members to be able to resign their seats prospectively if they like to run for a different seat. Let me give you a little example, that sounds kind of confusing. But if, for example, a council member would like to run for mayor, <laughs> for example, <Yeah. laughs> uh, and that council member went to the mayor, now there's a vacant seat that now has to go through yet a second election, a subsequent special election, and we incur the cost of both elections, um, as opposed to if that council member were able to give up their seat at the time of running for mayor, we could actually run both seats at the same time. This is a voluntary option for candidates if they would like to their current city council. And that fills that council spot right away. You may know this year we had a little setback where uh, that did happen, the council member ran for mayor. Um, they did get that, that uh, role, and then the empty council spot, we had a real hard time running a special election. 
Uh, it's a redistricting year, it's a census year, there's all sorts of problems, and nobody would help us. So we're waiting until November. That's a long time to wait for the seventh council member. So, um, argument, so this is about language that you'll see for the first one about all the changes for streamlining and modernization of the conduct of city business. Those in favor believe that amending certain sections of the city charter, the ones listed up here, would modernize and streamline city operations. But those opposed say the residents should not change the charter, which is the master document for city amendments. When it comes to the election one that I just talked about, here's the actual ballot wording that you'll see. We're not changing the home rule charter to allow for prospective vacation of, of um, current office. Those in favor believe that making this change could save money and time by not needing to conduct a special election. Making this change could help ensure that the mayor and six council members are serving the city without unnecessary vacancies. But those who are opposed believe that residents should not change the charter, which is the master document for city governance. And it's not clear that candidates would even use this option if it were available, because it's a voluntary option. Okay, so like I said in the video, it's important to make sure that you're educated on all the different issues and it's most important that you vote. Ballots will be in your, in your mailbox by mid-October, you should have been or so. So thanks for are both here to answer any questions that you have about any of these three ballot election issues. Going back to bond issues just for a second, what determines the uh, interest rate? The market. So, um, when, but when? Uh, after, so if, uh, if the, the ballot question has a yes vote, then um, at that point, we could start the process of going to market for the, for the bonds. So it's the point, it would be 90 days after the election. So it's when the bond sale occurs, uh, there's a competitive, there's an auction process. And so it's it's the, the interest rate that's prevailing in the market at the time the bonds are sold. Is there any issue about timing? Yes, absolutely. Because right now, it would be a horrible time to do this. Correct, yeah. So um, <laughs> so that's, that's certainly something to keep in, in mind. Um, but having the authorization doesn't necessarily mean that that the sale would happen immediately. So the soonest it could happen is about 90 days after the election, but the project isn't scheduled until to, to occur until 2024, I think. So um, any time between sort of January of 23 and when the construction needs to occur, um, the, the, you know, our municipal advisor could time the market to make sure that the best interest rate available is what happens. You know, I hope it's clear about whatever they send out because I know there will be a lot of people that will be a certain, a certain, a certain group anyway and worried about if they're going to do it right now the interest rates would be way out of time of what we could do maybe six months to a year from now. Right. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I just, just make a comment. <clears throat> Jim Golden, who has been doing this for a long time, uh, probably as good as a guess in terms of being chief financial officer. Um, Jim would, would would not be waiting into a market without being real clear on on what's the right time and when will be the refinance opportunities because that's the other part of it. As interest rates come down, we've just finished refinancing through that. So we're not locked into that for 20 years or 30 years without not getting refinance. Tim, that's great. You know this. <laughs> But I mean, I, 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 that's part of the reason for doing this. You all have friends and networks, and you yeah, can share that as well. It's, okay. it's really important information on right now, yeah. you know, for whatever it's worth. Yeah, thank you. So well, how do we? How do you? How should this be amplified? You know, I don't. I, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's other than if somebody could explain the the time that the time limit. Is it, it doesn't mean it's going to be done right away. Somehow, I wish there was something in there that, that would, would explain if somebody were to read. Of course, it's the other other issue. But if somebody were to read a little bit about it, that they would make it clear that doesn't mean it's going to, as soon as this thing passes, you know, 90 days from now, we're going to go out and, and go out for some bonds, yeah. sell some bonds. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you. I, I don't know. Yeah. But only because of what's going on right now is more people are more in tune to because of the interest rates and the all the stuff that's going on with inflation, etc. That would I, I I would think that would be one thing that would tend to have people not vote for it, to be honest with you. Unless they understood, hey, this we're gonna do this at an optimal time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Whatever that's for. Great. That, that, that's, that's great. And I was curious about the interest rates as well, because most people like myself would like to know the total cost of the bond. Mm -hmm. And and maybe it's a little bit it would be helpful if we knew what that interest rate was based upon, or that's prime or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the other question I had is we mentioned sunset and whole group. What is being taken out of the floodplain along that reach? So the, there are some maps that are that are part of that, that ballot uh, web page that, that you can take a look at. Um, to a certain extent, you, you know the, the improvements from Sunset to Hover are going to complete the changes to the floodplain that have actually occurred um, downstream of that. Right. So um, uh, some examples, you know, there are some commercial residential areas on the south side of uh, of the creek. Um, uh, heading <laughs> heading east um, from sunset, and, and that's primarily what is taken out of the flood. So, so is this then the supplement? What has already been done to those eastern reaches, or is this some sort of mitigation for that reach? Or well, the whole thing is mitigation. <laughs> well, true, <laughs> yes. true, 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 true. But, but I mean, if we've already done the work on those eastern reaches. Why do I care about this stretch from sunset over? And I'm just playing devil's advocate. <laughs> sure. so. so this is really the last piece of those improvements. So the, the whole thing, so we have conceptual design for you know, the, the whole thing of, of, uh, of the creek within the city also. Um, <laughs> and it is Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of hard to see, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then the answer that takes the rest of that it takes everything. It takes 800 acres that's currently in the floodplain, out of the floodplain. Okay. And it enables the split flow that's going to be west of Homer. Right. The whole plan to do that is predicated on a split flow design that moves water back into the channel, which is only going to get done if, this, if we have the $20 million to make this investment. It takes 800 more acres out of the floodplain that's still in the floodplain. Okay. And, and does all of the developed areas of you know the annexed portions of the city? Um, except that there's one commercial property that's still in the flood. Okay, and again, just playing devil's advocate further, a lot of people are going to view this as okay, you're, you're making this, taking all of this space out of floodplain for the riverside development. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm just heads up there, you might need some resistance with that. Second thing is, there's been a lot of news in the, in the paper about the bank swallows. How do you guys intend to combat that? Oh, yeah. So, Sorry, Tim. Sorry, Sam. You're the one that's going to hear it. So. <laughs> so, in the technical memo uh, that was released in 2018, really talking about the conceptual design for this area, we, we did talk about the bank swallows. Um, so, obviously, there's been a lot of conversation in council about that, that we're aware of the bank swallows, and, and we've committed to preserving the nesting opportunity. In this area, it may not be the specific nests that exist today, right. but there will be that appropriate habitat um, to, you know, welcome the bank swallows back when they when they migrate this way. You know, after the completion of the project. I think the I think the terminology is is restore, not preserve. Correct. It's restore what, what the advocates wanted was the preservation, <laughs> which was which would have prohibited the slip flow of design. Right. And it would have cost millions and millions more. Mm -hmm. The, the, the restoration of the, of the habitat is a different kind of a, an approach. And there's some evidence that it works, that bank swallows aren't that persnickety about their nest. It's the environment. And what took precedence, I hope you'll appreciate this, in this decision were, were people and their property. Not that we don't care bank swallows, right. but we were going to first put people first and their property and then attend to bank swallow habitat restoration. That, that's fair, right? I'm, like I said, I'm being devil's advocate a bit. So I have a strong point of view on this. <laughs> two, <laughs> two, two more questions. Does this in any way affect when the golfers? Is this is this going to take us out of the floodplain if we're in one? At the 
I, I can't read your maps. So. I don't know the answer to that. Okay, second, second question to take that a step further. You're asking for mitigation between sunset and over. Are you going to come back five years from now and say I need to fix them over all the way out to IG? It's a great question. Um, <laughs> there, there's not currently a plan for, for that. Um, you know, certainly, I think it would be a, a policy decision about whether to continue uh, the improvements. And you know, our recommendation at that point would be to, to look at the, the cost and cost and benefits of. Uh, okay, but you feel like this stretch is going to have a significant benefit for all the work that's been done this far and, and protect long run. Yes. Okay. yes. And, right. and the way that we know that is that it's been through the you know FEMA's cost benefit analysis calculator and shows that it has a. Degree. You, you just kind of segue into another question for me. So FEMA's cut the money. So we're done <laughs> from FEMA. We, we may still get additional FEMA funding. Um, and so if we are successful in receiving additional flood mitigation, mitigation grants, uh, that would offset the amount of money that would be needed from the bond issues. Okay. And could you know, certainly save a lot of money in the future. Very cool. Very cool. But the initial flood funding from FEMA, we're wrapping up with other the rest of the section. So we've taken it literally as far as we can down the river. Gotcha. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and, and other and a federal um, funding GCR, we've had lots of funding sources. Because that's our idea. When we gave the first, um, when we asked for the first $20 million in bond money, we said, okay, we know we need to get started, we need flexible funding. And so we were able to then fit lots of different grant opportunities to get us much farther down the river than the original $20 million investment because we could then target where those funds went to make sure that it was used in kind of the toughest spots to be able to apply for a no doubt massive project. No doubt. Right. All right, thanks. Yeah. I was really able to find the overreach map. So oh, please. There's, there's more information about it. Would it take out to the piece? I'm not totally sure, actually, when I look at this. It looks like perhaps. I think it does. I think, I think the it does. Board design actually yeah. takes, takes care of the issues that backed up on the golf course, right? Because of what happened. Yeah. Because it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was huge. Yeah. 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 Y
Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And we have, you know, five, seven signatures. Oh, I know. I, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, very helpful. We have any other questions for us? Thank you. You might have done last week. This is my first year around. So. Oh, <laughs> that's your first year. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. If you have any other follow-up questions, feel free to touch you know, base with Jackson and we're find me or find all of us, actually. Yeah. Are you scheduled to come to the Parks and Rec for the school? I don't think we are, actually. Are we scheduled for Parks and Rec? I don't think we are. That's by Isaac Walton. Yeah. So will that be closed? Yeah. While they're doing that? Isaac Walton, the building? No, or the path. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, current status for construction. That is this one right here, right? That is Isaac Walton. Walton. Yes. So quarter or three of 22 is construction. I think that'll be open a little bit. Well, Boston and Yeah. So Boston will be great. Well, I think it's yeah. It's actually like the red part that is so is that closed behind the left hand room. I can't see where oh. that is on there. <laughs> I just tell you the fences are up. <laughs> you can't. They're still up. You can't ride a bike through this. I think that you said fall. I saw it. Should be there. Fall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't the bridge being replaced too in uh, Boston? Yes. Yes. Is it still in the blue area there that that blue that's provided? Yeah. 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 That's the one that's coming to now and should be. Yeah. I'm going to probably close through the completion of the bridge for the next Can okay. I, I want to ask you one more question? Okay. If that bond issue goes down, can you at a later date bring it back up again? Yes. That's part of the reason we're going this year um, is that there, there's another year. <laughs> but so you can, you can still bring it up again because. Uh, you know, right now everybody's scared to death. Nobody wants to spend any money at all. And if, you know, I'm on the business on the business channel all the time, so I just know what's going on. And uh, it's just, just a horrible time to come out and quote and ask for money. Sure, um, but you know, having the flexibility to issue bonds at some point in the next, you know, eighteen to twenty-four months is going to help us. Um, 
while our rounds are down about 364. So the revenue we generate per round is staying very strong. Uh, that's really due in part mainly from our fee increases that we did this past uh, this past year. Um, membership sales have increased tremendously. Thirty-eight thousand dollars, I believe, in membership sales. So right now, people are spending money. But your last comment, we're kind of. I got an email today from the National Golf Course Owners Association. The three question: um, How do you think it's? What are we going to do whenever we start seeing a downturn? I didn't answer it, but I'm really looking forward to uh, kind of put more thought into it. Looking forward to seeing what their. Uh, what the general census is going to be on what we're we going to do as an industry. So far, with um, you know the past three years since COVID, it's been it's been wonderful. I mean, you got to try to make tea time. You've probably seen that it's of course it's a bowl. It's been very good. So golf is still strong. I don't see it going down yet, but I think it's something we definitely need to keep our pulse on, keep an eye out, and see how it see how things go. Um, I also wanted to mention last last month I mentioned to you guys that I lost all of my cart from the H tap. Uh, Danny put out an email. Did you guys see that? I got six kids hired. <laughs> it was wonderful. Um, so I don't know if you guys put the word out at all, but I, I appreciate that. You know, this with our jobs being seasonal, we get a lot of uh, a lot of high school and college kids. And about the middle of August. We're scrambling to get the staff, and this year's going to be worse, but it uh, will right back up. So, thank you guys for your help with that. Questions for you? Keep up the good work. I'll go ahead and do Sunset. Ryan's not here, and uh, Sunset continues to be a good, uh, good. Good course to talk about. My goodness gracious, an actual revenue year to date 377,621 um, for the year up 15.4%. So, on pace to have just a tremendous year at sunset, probably easily a record breaking year. So, they are doing great over there. And for everybody that went to the uh, celebration, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And see everybody out there. And to celebrate 100 years, and I think a lot of good, a lot of folks had a good time. Saw a lot of smiles, so that was really good. Very exciting. As far as Twin Peaks goes, we were uh, continuing to just hang right in there. Year to date, we're up 6.9 percent. We had a great month in uh, in July. Uh, it's amazing what we we're projecting and how far we're coming in over those projections, and we're still 16,000 over over what we did last year, which was good was a good year so and this this month is looking really good as well so um i agree with sam things are going to change you know but hopefully not too much and hopefully what we have is a lot of new golfers that have come out of this and the hope is that they keep playing and, and that just continues so we were, we've been very fortunate because i think we've really grown the game during this time and a lot of people that wouldn't have played golf have played golf the hope is that they just continue to play that's about all for Twin Peaks. I'd say that uh, well, I'll give some all that. I'm going to talk a little bit about it, so I'll say more in a few minutes. Thank you. So, um, our business, the Gulf Coast Advisory Board Movement Bylaws? Yep. I, I believe, Danny, you put that in your packet, the three areas that Paul had. Uh, brought up have been those changes have been made and unless there are other changes that someone would recommend I think we're ready for a motion to approve the bylaws. I move to approve the bylaws as amendment. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Get to be quiet that that long. <laughs> All right. All right. So back to new business. The, the um, Twin Peaks presentation. Ryan. Yes. 
Right, Ryan, while you're doing that, you want me to just roll that out? Yep. And you can set up and I'll roll the form. All right, so Ryan and I are going to kind of double team this. He's going to do the information side of things. I'm just going to do kind of the operation side of Twin Peaks and just kind of how things have gone this year. Um, and maybe kind of take everyone through a little different snapshot of, of how it all works. Um, we had, uh, let's see, we had several outside events. Um, they're corporate events. Uh, company called CED, which is an electrical supply company out of Boulder. Our Suez League had their big tournament here. Um, we're, we're used at Twin Peaks primarily for fundraisers. Uh, so Longmont High School alumni had a fundraiser. The American Legion held a fundraiser. Dance Dimensions held a fundraiser. Silver Creek, if you guys saw me run out there and grab their signs a few minutes ago. They had a fundraiser. Skyline Football raised $12,000 in their fundraiser. The Fraternal Order of Police is having a fundraiser on 9-10, and on that same day we have a double shotgun, the University of Colorado hockey team is having a fundraiser here. So that gives you an idea of all the different tournament type events that we run. Uh, we have, we're going to end up hosting five high school tournaments between the girls and then three boys events this fall. 17 men's club events uh, starting in March, um, actually April. We have Every Thursday, we have two groups of women that play. Um, the 18 holders have 20 to 24 players, and the 9 holders have 30 to 36 players. That's every Thursday all summer. Um, then we are competitive events. We run the, uh, the Spring Invitational uh, here at Twin Peaks. And we might do a fall. I, I'm thinking maybe not, but it's still a chance. And then the Bulldog City Championship. Uh, which is run at all three golf courses, which had 106 players this year. Everything went remarkably smooth. It went very well. Yeah, so it, it really did go well. It, uh, I'd say half the players now are coming in from out of Longmont, which is kind of neat because we're bringing people to our golf courses from out of town and we're supporting the event, so that's really cool. To that end, the uh, Colorado Golf Association, we're hosting the mid am qualifier here in a couple weeks on Mondays in September here. And then in the evenings, on Monday nights, we have, we have what we call the Bob League and the Suez League. On Tuesday nights, we have the Array League and the Inertia Space Production League. Wednesday nights, we have the Sweet Spots League, which is about 30 to 40 women in that league, and the DD League and the Suez League. So we have three leagues on Wednesday nights, and so we send them off both nights. Thursday nights, we have what's called the Ted League, which is our longest running league, and they have 40 people. That play. So this is these things happen every single week, all summer long. Then junior golf, we ended up doing. I described junior golf earlier in the year. We have first step and next step. We ended up doing twelve next step sessions, and we did ten first step sessions. So the next step of the older kids, there's a playing component to that. That playing component generated two hundred and thirty two rounds for the little the little ones after they finished. So they went out and played two hundred thirty two of them over the course of the summer. Went out and played nine holes. So that was really awesome. So we had 10 first step events. And that just, you know, gives you a real quick summary of what it is like in, in kind of just a week at Twin Peaks. And you got to talk about some of the bigger events, but uh, very different in all three golf courses. We have such diversity in all three golf courses. <coughs> and Sam has a whole bunch more corporate events. Ball Aerospace was there last week, right? Yeah, yeah. First, they got more, ever, yeah. A lot, lot more corporate stuff there, and then a lot more fundraisers here because our price is cheaper, which means if you're running a fundraiser, you can raise more money. So it just makes sense. So anyway, that just kind of gives you an idea of, of how things are at Twin Peaks. And uh, I wanted to say too that I can't say enough about Ryan and his crew. My goodness, what a, I mean, the golf course we have a going on 50 year old irrigation system, and uh, they, 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 they chase leaks all summer and they put the water where it needs to be and thank goodness Mother Nature helped us out the last couple of weeks. Well, the, course, the, course is, the course is in the best condition it's been in all year. It's the greenest it's been. And uh, but Ryan and his crew, just, just the city tournament, I can't tell you. Uh, the feedback we got was so nice to you know, have guys play 18 holes and not one complaint. Everyone could not stop raving about how good the greens were and how great the golf course played. Uh, just and him and I got to go out and, and prep the course and, and kind of mark the course for how we wanted it set up. So we actually put a lot of thought into you know making the golf course 
present really well for the players and give them a chance to really shoot a good score. So it was really neat. So I can't thank him enough and his crew. And I can't thank Jeff enough for kind of, how do I say, trusting us and empowering us and giving us giving us the ability to go and do what we need to do to get things done. And that's that for us has really been great. So Ryan, take us away. All right. Like Keith mentioned, I'm going to talk about some of the maintenance stuff. I'll we'll kind of go over the projects we have, kind of where we're moving to the future, some little information for the rest of the year, and there will be room for any questions if anyone has it. So we'll get started here with doing a Twin Peaks project update. One of our largest projects we've had so far this year was the cart path renovation on 5 P box. This was a Cart path that we've had in the works for the past year and a half, and COVID kind of disrupted the scheduling of it. The company we had scheduled for it had well, too much work and not enough workers last year, and we kind of got pushed off of this year. We finally got it done and was finished up uh, June 17th this year. So this kind of presents a before and after uh, both of the uh, areas here. So now we have a a little bit of a cart path that goes from the restrooms to the five key box area with the turnaround area by the Cham on five. And also you notice here on the lower right hand one, we also laid some sod and put in sprinklers. So if anyone who's been familiar with the area knows that this for the longest time has been a big dirt bank. Now it has had grass growing on, growing on it all summer long due to the new sprinklers and the sod that was put in that area. So we're really happy that it finally happened and I think it's a great improvement to that area and we'll be had a good uh, visual improvement for the golfers too. And also it's a good use area. So, so one of the other projects that I had done this year is not as exciting was replacing <laughs> this uh enclosure here in the parking lot. Just as important. Yes. It is important. <laughs> so the old enclosure out of the four supports had one that was still standing. All the other three of them were broken off at the ground. So had a company come in, uh, redo the whole enclosure. So now the two support beams in the front are now metal eye beams. So they won't crack underneath the pressure of the gates when they're open and closed. I'm sure the sanitation department really appreciates not having to fight with the gates every time they come to get the trash at the golf course. So, you know, not as exciting as a car path, but equally as important. And one of those things that needed to get done, and it's added a little bit of visual improvement out there in the parking lot for everybody. I can tell you, somebody who takes the trash out is significant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you just didn't know what you were going to get when you were opening that thing before. Yeah, before and, now, and now you just you just kind of pull that little black handle down and it opens up real nice. Yeah, you can see kind of faintly here the marks the old gate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. black top to make it a little hard to open. And now this one, no problem. So I'm not kidding. It's real nice. I should also go give it a little go before you leave. <laughs> So we have that done. And also on the agenda for this year, uh, one one to get done is a uh, renovation of the women's restroom on the golf course. This was something that we did the men's side, I believe it was last year already, because the whole wall that separates the two restrooms um, was really unstable. So if you ever been in there and the sink swallowed, that's because that wall didn't have the support it needed for the sinks. So the construction crew that came in went at it from the men's restroom side, because that's where all the piping and access was. So this year, I still need to call and get some pricing, and I want to get the women's restroom updated like the men's room, so it will have the stalls painted to match. So this is the men's room on the right, just to give a visual example of the colors. So the green stalls will be painted the kind of tan beige color and then the white walls will get repainted and the RFP board that separates here where the mirrors are will be redone so it'll be nice shiny white. So 
This is something I still have on the docket for this year. I just wanted to do it once the golf course play kind of slows down because it'll make the golf course, the restroom unusable for about a week or two. And after earlier this year, after we had some issues and not being able to get any temporary restrooms, I figured it was better to be done in the slower season of the year. So once we start getting here towards the fall, start getting some pricing and get this project moving. the biggest project we have going on here's just a little brief update on the Twin Peaks irrigation system so earlier this year we went out put a bid out for the entire irrigation system with um, pump stations new sprinkler heads new controllers new pipe in the ground it came in over budget and we kind of had to regroup and figure out what path we wanted to take. So we decided, since we had enough money to do the pump stations, we actually turned this into purchasing two weeks ago. And purchasing is currently working on getting the official bid together. And this will go out to bid here in the first part of September for we're going to get the two new pump stations tied into the old irrigation system. So that way, the heart of the irrigation system will be updated and then from there in November we'll be going out to bid for the rest of the system along with sunset so it's kind of uh, going to make it a two-part project now so this right here kind of gives a little example here on the left of a schematic of what our new pump stations would look like and then this here on the right is kind of a brief overview of where the new pump stations will be tied into the existing irrigation system. Where the existing irrigation system is the red and the new stuff is the blue. So once this portion is done and we move on to the new stuff, whatever company comes in will be able to tie in where the blue is without disrupting around the pump stations and then move out from there to the new piping whenever that phase gets started. And we'll send the presentations both for Twin Peaks and New Creek uh, up to you tomorrow so that I mean, it's really hard to read that. But it that way you can take it. comes on the PDF like this. I tried to clear it up, but it's real. Yeah. Okay. It's just small from where we're sitting. Yeah, so then as part of this portion of it, the down here will also be getting the new central computer, which will be a great asset to the new pump stations because the central and the pump station will be able to talk to each other and that way they'll know, the computer will know what the pressures are in the system and the pump station will know what the computer wants to do so they can work hand in hand to optimize how the system runs. So it'll be more efficient, save power, less water, unlike the system we have now where we plan for how it runs, but it might not run that way because everything's mechanical and some things don't always run the same way twice when we set it up. Ryan, right, because of the nerd, where's the central computer located at? The central computer is down at our um, maintenance shop. So, so it'll be on site? Yep, it'll be on site. Yeah. So it'll be a physical computer on site, but part of the software is it can be remotely accessed through an app. Oh, sweet. Okay. So like currently now I have access to Twin Peaks and Sunsets through the different apps. So if something ever happened, it can be adjusted on the fly from afar, or if or if I'm in the field working on something, you can send out a signal to the system to test something from in the system instead of having to run back to the shop, test it, and run back out and see what you're doing. Very good. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. And I assume you stop the system if it's raining and Yep. All that good stuff. Yep. Um, I don't know if it'll be part of this phase or the second, but there will be a weather station at some point. So in this part, it'll be right now where we communicate with the clubhouse staff. Hey, is it raining? Or hey, it's raining here. You guys should come take a look and then we'll shut it down. We've, which this year we've actually had to do an awful lot with these random rainstorms we've gotten in the area, but. Mother Nature always is the best sprinkler system when you can get it. 
Any other questions on this time? I, I assume that you know how much water you're using now? Yes, we have a... Because what's going to be really important is when you get that done, is to be able to say, okay, we were doing this amount of water, and now we're only using this amount of water. And I bring that up only because I was in charge of our system at our HOA. We have, we have a thousand heads. And it was put in 1986. And it's still there, right? And I, I had this, when somebody said all, all the stuff and problems you run into, oh my God. So anyway, uh, just we had you know people come in and inspect it for water and were we doing it right and all this kind of stuff. And one of the things that we did do is we changed the heads. There were a thousand heads, and they were pressure sensitive. What we we are at really relatively small area, but you could go two blocks that way and the pressure would be one way. You go two blocks this way, the pressure would be something else. And you're trying to say, okay, I want to put on a, you know, an inch, of, an inch of water over three days or whatever the case may be. But this inch over here and the inch over here would be entirely different. And so by putting in the, these, these heads that were sensitive to pressure, we actually reduced our water by 25% and the green and the grass was as green as it ever was. And so, and the nice thing about it for us, because we were part of NGLA, we went in for a for a grant. We got the grant to pay for it, and et cetera. So, um, but if people are going to criticize you or criticize us at any, any point in time, you definitely definitely want these these, these statistics and figures to well, prove that this, what we're doing is the right thing. Well, this map here doesn't illustrate this. This is this the small portion of it, but uh, unlike. Uh, a residential system that's kind of a hairy bone, you have your water and then it moves out. This new system will be completely looped. So one area will be getting water from numerous directions to help even the flow and the golf course. And right now, this system we currently have, the heads will throw about 90 gallons a minute at 110 feet at 100 PSI. The new system is designed to do about 65 to 70 feet throw at 60 PSI, and the heads will throw about 60 gallons a minute. So already on paper, we're already ahead Good. of savings, and we'll be, we'll be moving from, uh, currently we have around, I believe it's 800 sprinkler heads, and we'll be going up to 1,400 sprinkler heads just because of that spacing that shrinks down, which will make it a lot less room for air if it's ever windy, uh, any dips in pressure so you don't have as much throw for it to have those um, bad spots to come in between the heads. So it'll be a lot more uniform and tight than this current system we have. The point's a good one though. And every time, whether it's the Riverset development or any other project, first question is do you have enough water? And, and, and we're not far away from people arguing that the golf courses are, I know it. are an unnecessary luxury. Yeah. We don't have enough water, which is not true, but I having mean, those data would be really powerful in time. So all you've heard the past couple of week or so on the national news is the Colorado River Program. Hey Brian, I have a separate question. Yeah. About the gold crushers and, and, and in general, I mean, we yeah. spend a fair amount of money putting them in all three golf courses. Can you just tell me real quick how you kind of maintain that? I know that you know from the tee box at nine to the clubhouse at uh, uh, sunset with probably the rain kind of building gullies, and you see you know the turnaround at eight getting worn out. Same thing here on the back of five, a little bit between ten and eleven. I mean, how do you how do you maintain that? Do you drag it like a baseball field? I mean, what do you do? So um, the gold crushers we used, or the red crushers we used at sunset, I believe Deep Creek has used some of the same product. Um, so it's a crushing material and then it has a binder in it. It's uh, called Staylock. So the, when it gets the moisture in it, you pack it down and then eventually over time it will harden as concrete. But it does, well, almost like concrete. But it does, when it does get wet, get a little soft. So yeah. in high rainstorms, it does tend to flow a little bit. But the way we would uh, maintain it 
is you either get um, a device like a box blade or we have a scarifier on the back of one of the sand pros. You rip it up a little bit, put down new material, and then you discompact it. And then just keep compacting it and then it will. Yeah, because I think all those rainings have an effect on it, mm -hmm. it, right? It's a few places where it's yep. and then, showing somewhere. And then, yeah, at sunset on number nine, it, we are learning that it's not probably the greatest. So that would be great the there, grade. and that yeah. grade is a lot steeper than we thought. Yeah. But the guys over there have been filling in the gullies as they can and trying to patch it as much as they can. It's just an ongoing, you see it, put it down, you pack it, and we have some extra stuff around the maintenance shops to fix, in, fix any potholes or gullies that come up as you go through the year. Thanks. Yeah. Great. And then the next slide is another upcoming one here for this is just a slide of uh, 2023 projects. So up there we have the irrigation system replacement that we hope to get going. Um, any address any items on the fixed asset inventory we have. So everything we have on the golf course, um, it'd be like the fridges or heating tables up here, to the air compressors at the shop, to the toolboxes, all we put a life on them. So every year we address what things may need to be replaced. So each year we put a fixed set of money to go through that list and then replace any items we may need to each year, which also um, kind of goes into the next one where we'll be replacing the driving range picker. So the picker part on the front of the tractor out there will be replaced. It's definitely seen its wear and tear over the past, how old would you say I think is Keith? I've been here 17 years. Uh, <laughs> and it has to. Uh, and it wasn't me then. No, I can't say that for sure. We had one replacement. What, well, when we went to the tractor. Yeah. We went to the tractor, retrofitted the tractor, we had to get a different yeah. a different picker at that time. Okay. So that's yeah. probably seven, eight years. Yeah. So it's definitely time to get a new one. It gets, it's years yet. <laughs> it gets pushed around quite the I'm sure if we put a odometer on it, it'd get pushed around quite a few miles out there around that driving range. And then one of my other projects I have going on is um, replacing sections of the tie wall here around the clubhouse. We have on the left here, the far north end. You can see by the picture a little bit, it's starting to push towards the parking lot. We have this picture in the middle where one section was already rotten out and fell over. And then the set picture here on the right where it's pushing towards the ditch. So next year we need to find a construction company and um, decide how much of this tie wall we can tackle. And that will be on the um, projects for 2023 moving forward. Is there a project number for so we're going to see this in CIP budget? Yes. Okay. Uh, so PRO 191. So this is CIP budget? Yes. That's the, and this is what we have proposed. Um, Harold, uh, the city manager, will be uh, presenting the budget next week to council. And council goes through September and October with budget meetings and Sometime the end of October, early November, we'll find what, uh, what um, council approves. Great. We'll see the CIP budget on the, on the 30th. Yes. Yeah. PRO 191. So PRO 191. <laughs> this will be out there. All right. The next one we have here is coming up. Can I say something about that retaining wall? Yeah. That's the first thing somebody sees when you pull in here. So. Um, yeah. Nice to get that fixed up a little bit. Yeah. The last couple of years, it's really been our goal to improve the golfer experience out here as much as we can. Um, but the visibility is very important. Um, that one of the challenges we had with the uh, 2018 bond election, which was a great thing because it brought in, you know, six million dollars to the to the golf fund. The challenge is. Golfers don't get to use the maintenance building at U Creek. 
and everything else is below ground. Still very important things, but we're really trying to put an effort into replacing or making improvements that have a direct impact on the, the golfer in, in their experience. And, and not to say, those are important because your golf courses will look better. Yeah. Which that does a direct impact for golfers. Yeah. So. All right, the next one here is, so coming up here in just under a month is fall aeration at Twin Peaks are scheduled September 13th. So I have a little video here of when we did this last year. So we're going out with the solid pines that are gonna bend the greens a little bit, get some air, get some nutrients, get some water down into the subsurface of the greens and open them up for the year. And then that way, um, it'll help reduce the compaction that we put on the greens. So this time of year, we definitely start seeing some of the wear and tear on the greens from all the mowing, rolling, and everything else to keep us up in good tournament conditions. So this is just to help get the greens healthy going into the winter. And so this is our operation in the next slide I have here. So this is, we're doing the same thing we did last fall at this time. So on the left is a closer up picture of the times we're gonna use. They're either an X or a plus, depending on how you look at it. And that's why it increases the amount of surface area that we're putting the time into the ground, but it's not making a bigger hold like um, a hollow time. So this way it heals a lot quicker. So this picture here is the afternoon after we aerated last year. So after this, we um, roll them, hop dress, put down our fertilizer, drag them smooth, and water them in. And then this picture here is about a week later where everything's growing through and we've already mowed it again. So you can see just in those seven days, it's already made a huge difference on recovery back to where it was almost before aeration. And then I don't have any other pictures past this, but then another week after that, it's like it never happened. So that's what we plan to do here at Twin Peaks coming up on the 13th of September. Then, next one here, I know Sam mentioned it again. Here's just a picture of uh, the Twin Peaks maintenance crew, or should I say, what's left of us. So right after this, we did lose um, four college students to go back to school. So right now, this is what I have left here at Twin Peaks, including myself, to do the daily operations on the maintenance staff. So, what is that, seven? There's seven of us taking care of, well, eight counting me, counting and taking care of the golf course of daily operation, mowing, setup, cutting cups, irrigation, planning, working on equipment, so. Just like Sam mentioned, it's that time of year where we lose seasonal help and it's kind of doing what we can to get through the shoulder months of the year. Then, next thing I have, if anyone has any questions for me other than what was asked? I've got another stupid question that goes back to what we were talking about before. Sure. Uh, if it turns out our HOA and the person that works with our system is the person that maintains the St. Marion School District system. Okay. And one of the things that the St. Brain School District system has done is they've got they've gotten a product to put on all of their grass, which allows the grass to go deeper into the ground, which means you use less water. So we decided to do that in our HOA and use the product, and it has helped dramatically. And I don't know if anybody would ever question you about, you know, what's your what's your soil like on your golf course if you know if people start really getting crappy about so, this. And and so it, I don't know what it is. I don't know. But we had we actually had people come out who were certified to look at our to look at the uh, clay, our our, uh, our our soil. And and then after we did it, we put the product on, we measured it, and it really made a difference. And it really helped us reduce the amount of water that we were using. And so, I, you know, Safe Frame School District does it, and they've made huge steps in that direction. 
And so I don't know if it's something that golf courses consider keep looking at or not looking at or whatever. But at some point in time, and there's there are you know companies now that they have products that you can use just for that purpose based on the type of soil that you have. And I don't know if it's something you ever want to look so, at or not. But. So just going off of how you explained it, I'm sure Dan will have the same stuff, but it sounds a lot like a wetting agent. A soil, a soil surfactant that helps the water get down through whatever your stuff. You know, what it what it really is is it, it, uh, to loosen the soil. I hate to say that, but sort of. But what it's really about is allowing the grass roots mm -hmm. to go deeper into the ground. And our grass roots were about like that, and now they're like that, and that makes a big difference in the amount of water you have to use to keep the grass green. So I don't know if that's anything that you've ever considered looking at or not in the long term. <laughs> I can't remember what I had for breakfast. Uh, but if you're really interested, I'll, I'll get you a whole lot of stuff on it. Well, that'd be great, John, thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you may have mind also do every year, throughout the year meet with agronomists in the area that come out and do soil samples oh, for us. Okay. So we can, so we do know how much we need or what our ground uh, soil is missing and what we need to add to oh, different okay. areas. So we do take a look at all that different stuff and okay. see what the courses do need to help it a little better. Well, I just brought that up because that's another issue that may come up at some point in time. Before Dan gets going, I just want to say what Brian was explaining relative to the verification of the greens and those, those pluses or X's and that whole regeneration process. From an operation standpoint, the, the golfers don't even hardly know that we're doing it. And the, the golf course is very playable. So when you when you do a spring verification, we pull cores out. I mean it is destructive and it is, takes forever for the grass to grow back. It's a it's a full six weeks before you finally have a really good surface again. And this happens very quickly, and even while it's happening, the ball still rolls good, people can still putt good, but yeah, we're taking care of our turf. So I really appreciate that they're doing that, and that's helped us revenue-wise in the fall, doing it this way as opposed to pulling cores. Because people will call, are you pulling cores? No, we're not. And then they'll make the tea time. So, you know, thanks, go ahead, Dan. All right, so I'll talk about some projects that we got going on this year at U Creek, and then a few that we have going on for, for next year also. So 2022 project. So, we started this one as a number 10 approach. So we did this drain, it was pretty early in the spring, but if you play up there, this is this is back at the beginning, the ditch is right here. So this area, it's kind of all bent grass, it's just over time, it's kind of turned bent grass, takes over the rye grass. So it gets really spongy in that area. And if you have a, a little pitch or a chip shot in there, it would get so spongy that it would just grab your club and you wouldn't be able to get a good lie. So this has helped out a lot and we've cut back on the irrigation too, as you can see, it's got a little drier than we would like over here, but, but I think this project has helped out with this approach a lot. I think it's a lot more playable this year than it has been in the past, and, and it's worked out pretty well. Any questions about it or anything? But most of you guys play up there, so you've probably seen it. Um, and then we added a lot of irrigation this year, um, mostly to the, I guess it'd be the north side of number 13, um, this is the path over here, but this is a picture kind of that's hard to see, but you can see in the picture here, there's, you can see where the irrigation was hitting and where it wasn't. So with that, we, we put heads all along this path here, kind of in between. So it's really helped out. I mean, that's as lush as it's ever been probably since, you know, the day the place that was built. And, you know, it's, it's a give and take too. You got to figure out how much water can handle because there was a couple spots that got a little wet out here. So it's, adjusting it all the time, getting out there daily to kind of see what's wet. And then like Ryan was talking, you get into the computer and you can adjust percentages. Like we'll start at 100 and I think we have it down to about 50%. So that means it runs half the time that it would if it was um, for the ET that we put in there. So it's probably, it's probably running about, you know, seven minutes there. So now it's about four minutes. And I mean, I love that that's filled in. And 
We did one in the late fall last year on 17 too, and that one has the most grass that's been out there in a long time too. So, and the reason that's significant, everybody, is people hit the ball right on number 13 pretty much all the time because if you hit it left, you're in the you're in the, the hazard of the houses. Yeah. So they hit it right. Well, before when there was no when there was no irrigation there and not enough irrigation, that ball was rolling right over the hill, right across the path into the hard pan. Maybe they find it, maybe they don't, but they waste a lot of time looking. Yeah, this is going to hold a lot of balls up as they get off that right side of that fairway. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, homeowners, you know, the balls don't get all the way out there. It just gives a better look. You know, it's just it helped out a lot. So I mean. One guy pretty much did all the work too, so he was out there for you know two, three weeks just kind of picking away at it. You know, he likes to just kind of go hides up there, and, and he did a great job. So, um, and then this is the area that we're going to use the track mats on that I talked about last month. So you, this is this is twelve, the area where um, carts not supposed to, but a lot of blue flags out there these days. So they wear that out. And we put ropes here, but this will just clean it up. And then we can open it up for those blue flags. This is on 10, same type of deal. And you can see this area here. We put a, a type of material in it before, and it was more of a hard plastic, um, like honeycomb type stuff. And it worked for maybe a couple of years, but as you can see, it's it, it didn't do what it was supposed to, and it's just kind of wore itself back out. Um, and then this is number two to the west side of number two, where everybody likes to drive down there. So, so this will. Um, help clean that up. We'll get that. It'll go about four feet out in the length of that, and then we'll kind of restock the other area. And hopefully, that will help clean up that area. And then probably a couple more. Do you know what I'd like to do? Is where everybody goes off of number three, right in that area, and number six. I think is on our list. I think we have enough material to do to do all those areas. So. Um, other projects that we've done this year is in the early spring. You know if Everybody talked about how bad it was coming out of spring, and it was. So we did a lot of repairing on, on where areas out there. We bought a lot of like portable sprinkler heads that we could put out in different areas. We got a lot of seed, sand, um, topsoil, compost. Tried to help that going, and we we got a good majority of them filled. And there's still a few, you know, that will take some time. But uh, but it was it's it's better than it was in the spring. So and then. Right before the city tournament, a couple weeks before that, we topped off all the green side bunkers. You know, you forget about how many shots are hit out of there and sand, or the wind, you know, blows all that sand out of there. So there's a couple, number six is a bad one, number two is a bad one. You get, you know, down to that, you don't realize it until you kind of hear about it. So we went and checked them all and topped off all the green side. We had plans this year of doing fairway bunkers, but I think people kind of like fairway bunkers to be a little bit more firm and be able to kind of pick it out of there where on the green side you want to get under it. So so that's where we shifted our priority there um, to the green side instead of the fairway bunkers this year. And then there was a couple patches up on the deck up there when one of our guys walked in, we hired kind of counters walking and he almost sank right through a whole spot. So some of the boards had rotted out up there. So we got a construction company up there that just kind of cut the, it was an inch plywood and they cut that out and redid it and then repatched it. So. Those were uh, three of the projects we've done so far, and I forgot to put in there, but we are going to redo the parking lot up there um, September 19th, so they're going to come and do that, which is way overdue, so, so come back on the 20th and we should have should have a new <laughs> new parking lot restriped and, and repaid or, or laid over, so that will be a big improvement we need that very bad. Um, and then this stuff's projected for uh, 23. So this is the retaining wall on number 11. Um, you can see how it's splitting and all the, this is gravel that's falling through there. And this has actually been put together a little bit by our city staff, the operations guys, went out there and tore the whole wall down and kind of rebuilt it and it looks great right now. So I don't know, we have trying maybe to get them to do the other side and save us maybe $100,000, but it's gonna come down to what the engineers think if, if it needs to be done by an actual, you know, <coughs> geotechnical firm or, or something like that. So, but they did a great job and it's, it's holding up really well right now. So, so that's one of them for 2023, which will take a good part of our CFP budget. If that's what we have to do. Um, and then we want to finish the path on number 13 with the with the crusher materials. 
And then there's some uh, some stuff that's starting to wear up on the clubhouse, like around the perimeters, around the gutters up there, maybe some other few areas up there. There's a railing down there that's getting a little loose and wobbly. They get some quotes on that. So this that's some of the other couple of projects that we have coming in for 2023 around the clubhouse. Um, and then these are these are our guys, my guys right here, um, minus a couple of the other full-time guys that were on vacation last week but uh yeah we can't do it without uh, <laughs> without our help and we have a couple more than ryan does but we have a few more acres too so so uh yeah those are the ones that uh, make a hand happen and can put on a plan but i can't do it without without a lot of help so so i appreciate those guys a lot so that's about it for you creek anybody have any questions for you creek what happened to the third right now? Yeah, uh, I was actually back from that. No, I, I don't have a big problem talking about this. It's been a nightmare for the last two months. I mean, did something happen? I mean, no, nothing happened. Well, <clears throat> irrigation, <laughs> we had a, <laughs> we had an irrigation problem, and somebody didn't get like it. something happened. To so it. yeah, it was just it just burnt. Yeah, somebody an irrigation satellite went out, and they trip every once in a while, and if you don't catch it. It doesn't turn itself back on or anything, so you gotta go find the problem. And it happened late June. <coughs> and, uh, we got it back, it was doing pretty good. It happened late July again. And yeah, it drove me crazy. But we saw it in the day. We saw it at the front, the front right, the front left, and we got a little bit, we gotta do a little bit more in the back. So it's it's a little rough right now. We'll take a lot of top dressing, some some mowing. We're gonna go to a temporary green. On number three for till Friday morning. Friday morning we'll open it back up, and it'll be. It's not going to be 100. There's going to be grass there, so we'll get it back. Give us a couple of weeks, and three green will keep up with the rest of them. Hopefully. And it's important to remember 25 mm irrigation system you drink as well. No, I get it. Yeah, I mean I've just been playing here a long time. I've never, never seen anything. Uh, like it's 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 not not <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was oh, like a oh, fungus or something. I don't know. I, I guess I wish. <laughs> Yeah, no, the has got to work with out there. They're they're doing a great job. Yeah, there was a couple of sleepless nights because of that. <laughs> Three years. I think that's the other reason I was surprised with Iron Man. So you know I played it all the time. Yeah, I've never seen. It. Yeah, that's greens were really good this year. But somebody told me, hey, of course it's great. Greens are great. I said, yeah, but for <laughs> so. And if you create a challenge um, oh, to keep it wall to wall green because. Of all the hills, the undulations, yeah. and the and the rubs, you keep those greens. The fairways flood. Keep the fairways just right, and they stay a little bit dry. Which I'm more of a fan of because if the drops a little bit dry, clay spatula. Yeah. You know, we'd rather have a, a little bit of a drier rub or a thick plush rub or anything like that. Oh, so, okay. But the dam uses a little less water, water, and uh, the course is playing firm and fast. Yeah, it's been very good. Thank you. Right. So, any items from staff? Any items from the board? I had one thing, and at the risk of uh, people getting the wrong impression, gone, but I had, a, I had this question asked of me. What does the city or the courses have any sort of policy or procedure with regard to dealing with recyclable trash? It, they do, but we we don't have the receptacles yet. We're working with sanitation, and we'll have those out on the, the in the clubhouses at least. That's all I need to know. Yes, for sure. We collect all the cans and we uh, put them in the recycling. Yeah, yeah of course, there guys go around on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they <coughs> separate the trash from the cans, the aluminum, which we put the bottles and all that. And, and, and I, I play a lot of Sunset, and I know we segregate the trash to some degree, but I don't, yeah. I don't think we have official signs saying, put your cans No, but our guys do, they like pick through yeah. action. Yeah. yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just <sorry. laughs> so, so, curious. I was just curious. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. That's all. Uh, yeah, I've got something. Um, I went to the 100-year uh, meeting or celebration at Sunset. And my wife wasn't with me, so I was by myself. So I decided to go around and introduce myself to a lot of people there 
And I said, you know, my name is John Haney, how do you do? I'm on the board. And I want to thank you for coming to our meeting and to our celebration. We really appreciate it. And, and you know, if you, do you have any comments or issues that you would like to bring up? Because we've got a board meeting Monday night. And so with you, I would like to share with you what I got, the feedback I got back. <laughs> And the other thing was there were about probably around 300 people and went through I think about 225, 230 hot dogs, ran out of, ran out of um, what do you call it, the, the buns, etc. But I think there were about 300 people. The other thing I noticed, the majority of the people were seniors, uh, maybe because they got the time to be able to go there and all that kind of stuff, etc. So most of the people I talked to were seniors. Um, one of the issues that came up by a couple of ladies was why don't you have a bathroom on the fifth on the fifth hole at, at, at sunset? They they said uh, they really complained about the system we got there now. What is it the the two uh, nice toilets? They said that they that they are, they thought it was just a disgrace of how they were being maintained. What I didn't do was go and ask them why did you know, what was wrong, et cetera. And they, they said, they just really complained about that. And they said, gee, can't you just bring a water line in from the street over to, <laughs> over to, you know, put some toilets in like that. They said, you've got a partial building, just finish it off. <laughs> so anyway, that was, that was uh, one of the issues that a couple of ladies had. Uh, another issue that came up multiple times was the calling for tea times and you know, we we didn't answer it at the at the golf course so it went to the to, to the you know where it's Chicago or whatever it is and they said they just thought that was terrible the way it worked and I said well look if you don't I said all you have to do is say we can please connect you back to the golf course so I did enter that with a couple of people but that was an issue that they had for for whatever that's worth. Um, Something else came up. I, I, is anybody familiar with the ditch that used to have at Sunset? Some some people, somebody, some people were there said, "I played this course since I was seven years old," and he was about you know seventy years old right now. And he said, "We need to put that ditch back at Sunset." And I had you know they you know and yeah, I said, "I don't have no idea what you're talking about, except." And he said, "No, I'm only kidding." <laughs> but, he, but, but he did bring that up, so if you're familiar with the ditch and such, yeah, that's one of the three. Yeah. So you can, you, can, you, can you want to talk about a water problem. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> so it was a sandstone ditch. So it was made out of sandstone, pieces of sandstone. It ran across, started about halfway down number one in Dave Orvis's yard, went across number one, went up the hill on number two. At the top of the hill on number two, it fed in right over there, and then, and then it it dropped down and the ditch itself still exists because it, you can hear it going down number three. Oh my so, but they had to fill it in because it was just you know, yeah. leaking everywhere. It was really cool, don't get me wrong. I, as a kid, I thought it was the neatest thing ever, but it, it was not functional. Well, that's anyway, that was the problem. Um, the, um, oh, uh, there was a couple there that said they just played it at, uh, up in Loveland. And one of the things that they had in Loveland that they really liked was a seniors couples league. And would we ever consider having it here, here at Sunset or one of the golf courses, et cetera? I don't know. He said, we, I thought, who I was talking to, said, I thought it was going to move down to, to uh, Longmont, but he wanted to know what was, whether any plans for that or not, or what you do or what you don't do. Or, so we feel like that means to step up and just form a league. You know, like if they have the interest for that, because we, we can't do that. I don't know how. I mean, we can't like start our own. The leagues come to us. Um, you know, we can like, we might be able to help out with the process, but somebody that has an interest like that, they'd be the perfect person to get something like that started. And we can help them with marketing it. Oh, okay. I wish I understood more, but I, I couldn't. I, I said I just worked about the meeting. Whatever good. Um, and Sam, <laughs> we, had a, we had a group there that just raved about your staff. Oh, good. They <laughs> raved about <laughs> 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 Listen, listen, they named them, they said you were dead. 
actually one so they went down and started naming name, 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 name. So, <laughs> that's, that's funny to what you're saying. Well, they all worked at you. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, the other, another thing I brought up, some of you wanted to know, why don't we ever put a screen up on, on getting going back to Sunset on 3rd, on 3rd Avenue there. And just as an aside, I was playing there in January with three guys, and they were hitting it from the blue tees, and one of them really was really good, and he hit the ball 300 yards without even trying. Anyway, he hit the ball from the third tee on the blue, and hit the tree at the top up, you know, the rise on the third, you know, and then there's that big tree up there. He hit the top of that tree. He went out into the, uh, on third Avenue, on the third street, and a car came by, hit a windshield, and broke it. And, uh, uh, you know, the neighbor, you know, he went out and took it, everything was fine, etc. But, and I said, well, I said, it had been considered several times, but the cost was so, so, so much, we just couldn't afford to do it. So I, I thought a good answer. That's a perfect answer. <laughs> okay, but I mean that's the best case. That's why those trees are there though. Those trees do help a little bit right there on the right yeah. side. See, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. See, yeah. yeah. how often does that happen? We never ball had fall in that high ball. You probably okay. never put a screen to the center. I, well, that's also true. That's also true. Um, so uh, the other thing though that was common all the way through Everybody raved about the conditions of the courses this year. That meant the U, Twin Peaks, and Sunset. They just raved about how wonderful the course conditions were. So, that, I mean, I, really, everybody couldn't say enough nice things That's about, to hear. about the, the, the three courses. The, these things I brought it up were sort of, you know, blah, they weren't really uh, except, the, except the toilet. Um, so that was that was what I got back. I hit Talk probably about thirty or forty people. Uh, most of them were, were at the uh, you know the tables and in the evening and all that kind of stuff, etc. But everybody thought thought what we were doing was fantastic, so that was really nice. I just wanted to pass that on to you. I think what you did was great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, so, Josh. Brian, yeah. Brian, I have a question to you. So, so the bathrooms over there are not supposed to be public bathrooms. The maintenance and sunset? Right no, they're public restrooms. No, they didn't. Oh. So you know there's two real bathrooms. No, no, in, in, in the court, they're talking about the fifth. Well, at the, the fifth. Uh, yeah, hold. Oh, yeah. There's, but that's what they did. Right. Right. So, so John, John, what Al's talking about is, is literally 75 yards from where those port potties yeah. are at. If they drive across Seven Fairway into the maintenance area, yeah. there are bathrooms right there. Yeah. Why would you take there all the time? Yeah. There's, <laughs> Yeah, they have an option to go, and then there's, you know, there's no way we're going to spend two hundred thousand dollars to put bathrooms. If I'd known that, I would have. I, would, I didn't know they were. We don't have it. I didn't know there were bathrooms here. No. And there were a couple of the elders that said, "Where are you going to get free carts again?" Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that so much did that give us. Yeah, yeah, right. Where are you going to get free carts again? I said, "Yeah, I like that idea too." So the, the free carts were a special we ran to bring people to the golf course with the number of folks that are playing golf right now, there is not a need to run a special. And until things may change, then we would revisit that. And, and as it, it may never come back because what we will do first is go to dynamic pricing which then sets the price for everyone, not just a specific segment uh, of the golfing population. Okay. You know, our, our answer, because um, we get that a lot of the creek as well, what do you give the uh, senior special on Wednesday? It's, you know, we have a senior special Monday through Friday. We have five days we have a senior special. We just don't get free carts anymore. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, Okay. Would you ever consider adding, you know, like to the pass, add the cart fees to right? Like I pay for the seven day a week pass, right? I mean, how much is that cart to that? So I can't get it for three quarters, so I know I can get a membership like if you were here or there. We have the three quarters now. With the cart? 
No, no, no. Just, oh, you're talking about yeah. the okay. You Instead of just paying for the you pay the you got the elite membership when you had to select. I don't know which one. I just have the seven day pass where I pay like uh, eleven here or thirteen here less, but then I pay for oh, the cart. You do it. So what if you add the cart to that? Pass? I think that's no. Uh, we we can't because so many people would rather just walk. Yeah. So Al, to answer your question a different way though, if you if you bought the elite membership, which I think we sell an elite membership for all three courses for thirty five hundred dollars. I didn't know that. Thirty five hundred dollars that includes carts, range green feet, and range balls at all three courses. Yeah, so that that would be yeah. that would be, or you could buy them individually. You just wanted to buy one for you, and you buy one at you, and you get your free carts out there, and you pay. You pay when it comes to the other courses. Right. What you have is the annual pass. Right. Yes, you pay a use fee and then you have to pay a card fee. Okay. But there is an option now, 3500 bucks. You know, right. just, you just get all do the math and see which one makes the yeah. most sense. It all depends on how much golf you play. And where. Yeah. I have one other item. I am almost 84 years old. And I come to these meetings. And I've got, I listen. I can't see these people, et cetera. Would anybody consider us having a picture of all of us together or something, or would that ever be something that you could do? We can we can do that next month. Uh, let's make sure that Marshall's here as well. Yeah, it's just so that I can so I can look at them. <laughs> you know, we sure. were in <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, that would be all for nice for <clears throat> Thank you. I'll do my hair next time. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.